Imagine that you're shopping online and suppose that you've clicked to a page in a store where you're deciding whether or not to buy a camera. So the camera is on the website and your choice is, do I want to click the button that adds this camera to my basket? Now, the camera is in the middle of the page, but there might be other products displayed on the page as well. For example, there could be pictures of other cameras that other consumers were also interested in. But the store could also be cross-promoting different kinds of electronics or keyboards or computer mice. So it turns out it matters what those other items are, even though your only decision that you need to make is this camera, yes or no. If you see a camera with other cameras, my research suggests you're actually a little bit more likely to buy the target camera because you're thinking about the decision as, should I buy this camera since I'm going to buy a camera? If you see the camera with other electronics, your decision shifts a little bit. It's less about, should I buy this camera? And it becomes more about, should I buy something today? And as a result, you actually become less likely to buy the camera on the page and maybe more likely to look around or to make a different kind of choice. As a neuroeconomist, one of the things that's a little bit different about the way that I approach some of these questions in marketing and policy is that I use not only survey methods or behavioral experiments or lab experiments, but I also study how the brain responds to the information that we get from the outside world and to making the decision itself. So I use a technique called functional magnetic resonance imaging or fMRI, which allows us to get a sense for which brain areas are more or less involved in making different decisions. And that can tell us a little bit more about what's going on under the surface. That is, if there are ways that the brain is processing information differently or focusing more on one kind of outcome versus another, that might be difficult for people to tell us in person, but it's the kind of thing where we can learn a bit more about what they're thinking by looking at these brain scans. So I bring all of this together to get a better sense of how we make the choices we make, why we make the choices that we make, and what else influences the choices that we make and changes them in ways that we understand and maybe don't necessarily always know are happening. So I think what's exciting about my position right now is that we can take these fundamental principles about how human psychology and neuroscience works and build models that help us understand how everyday life unfolds.